Okay, Mary Mitchell here. I am going to be resining, finishing up a resin piece here. Uh, this guy right here. Okay, uh, jellyfish. Um, and this is, oh God, when did I do this? A little over a year ago, 9 9 2020, and I'm just getting around to finishing it now. <laughs> Same as that other piece that uh, I have two other ones. Um, geez, they just, uh, I finally realized um, I better, I'm inspired. I should put it that way. Sometimes, I mean, I'm working on, as you know, you're probably the same way. Like, you know, several pieces at one time. So anyway, I'm going to do this guy. Um, I'm, I wasn't going to make it a beginner course and it's really kind of not, except I am going to go over mixing the resin because when I first started out doing this um I kept seeing people take their scales out you know you, these kitchen scales and the the fact is that that's not how I found out it's to be done the way it has to be done is that you have to use equal parts um because they don't weigh the same and I ended up with different amounts in each, each of my containers. So I, uh, I found out that it's, I think I'm correct when I say that it's by volume, not by weight. So I'm going to be doing that. Um, and I'm going to mix that up first. Um, I'm going to look on the calculator or resin calculator to see how much I need for this piece, which is a 16 by 12. Uh, I'll make a little extra just in case. Um, I also have a couple little ditties over there that I uh, will be able to use it on. Don't like to waste resin. It's uh, very expensive. So I'm going to be doing that and then I'm going to be um, doing this piece. And I hope you watch and I, I really want to thank everybody so much. I'm having a lot of trouble with these YouTube videos. I can't put thumbnails on them. I don't know how to put banners on them. I'm really, this is like no frills videos coming from yours truly. So bear with me. Hopefully they'll get better and, uh, you know, day at a time, right? Okay, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Okay, so here we go. I'm um, getting my respirator, I believe. I'm gonna put my, put that on, put my glasses on, and um, I'll be getting a, um, I, again, I can't stress enough, make sure you use your respirator, read all precautions before attempting resin. Please, please do that. Okay, so, I have my measuring cup here, and the way resin works, as I've stated already, is that you use equal parts, meaning that, you know, if you have a, a certain size cup, no matter whether it holds four ounces or eight ounces or two ounces, you have to have the same size cup for the other part. <clears throat> this resin I'm using is two-part resin. So I'm taking my cup and um, the resin calculator on the website that I went to. There's several out there. Uh, suggested that I use seven, seven ounces for this piece. So um, I have my cup. And um, I have these silicone sticks that I love. I got them from Walmart. They're the perfect, um, they're just perfect for this. And um, um, this is my hardener, I believe. Sometimes referred to as parts A and parts B, resin and hardener, two parts, equal parts of each. And I'm putting that in my cup. You'll eventually see that I switch to a larger cup because I'm, I find myself having a little bit of difficulty stirring this uh, in this cup because it's filled to the brim. And I should have foresaw that, but at any rate, 
Um, so when you're using equal parts, you want to stir the recommended for this resin is three minutes. Um, if I have larger batches, I will stir longer. You can tell because it becomes clear. You know, it's almost like when when it's not ready, there's sort of like these um, filmy, squiggly kind of lines in the liquid. And then when it clears, you know, as you start to stir it, it clears up. And you have a, a much clearer liquid. And uh, you have air bubbles, I'm sorry to say. Some people warm their resin up before they pour. It does help. I just, I don't, I've done it and it works, but I don't do it as a rule because any heat that you apply, I uh, will start the curing process from what I've read. So here I'm showing you my cup. I'm showing you uh, that they are both in here, both parts A and B, resin and hardener. And... I'm going to take my silicone stick and um, I think I'm showing you the other cup too because I, I believe I have every intention now that I think about it of transferring it into that cup. But I thought I would have it all stirred first. So I begin the stirring and I realize that I don't really have a lot of room to stir. But I'm giving it the good old try and I'm stirring it, being sure to, uh, first starting slowly, eventually what you want to do is, you see how I'm moving the stick against the side of the cup, you really want to, you really want to be thorough, as thorough as possible when you're stirring resin. You want to scrape the bottom, you want to scrape the sides gently, because the more rigorously that you stir, the more bubbles you're going to have. They can be popped with a torch or a heat gun, but you want to mitigate that as much as you can. Okay? So, eventually, this is going to switch, and you're going to see me stirring into a larger cup. Okay, here it is. See how it's much clearer. I've done my three minutes. But I'm going to stir a little more because I want you to see that um, I want you to see how another important thing that when you're stirring, you have to scrape the sides of your stick constantly. So you're not only stirring and, and getting the sides with which these silicone sticks are perfect for because you can really you can really get a good grip on those sides and really uh, stir that well. And with those sticks, you have to, any stick, popsicle stick regardless, you, you, you can really get around the sides and you can, you can see how, how right up there I am. Um, no liquid between the stick and the cup. And then I'm going to take my stick and I'm going to wipe it off, wipe off the, the resin back into the cup as much as I can get off and stir it again. And the reason for that is because you want you want it to stay as um, blended as possible because if you have anything that's not blended, you're going to have some parts of your of your painting that are sticky. Blend it, blend it, blend it. Here's the measuring cup. I'm wiping it out. And when I'm done with this video, I go back with some alcohol on a paper towel and I clean it out even better because I can reuse this several times, actually. So I just keep wiping it out. And alcohol, also nail polish, will work. Um, it's strong, so keep your respirator on for this, too. But reuse your, reuse your sticks, reuse your cups, wipe them down. Um, even, you know, even if, uh, uh, they start to get a little hard, the, the alcohol will take care of that. It will, it will soften it and take it right off. And here's the piece I'm working on. It's mostly done. I have it sanded down pretty well. I have it down as well as I want. 
I'm moving the camera so you can see a, a little better. Um, it's a jellyfish, as I said, and also you can't see it too well, but in the background, I did a jellyfish in the first, uh, the first couple layers of this painting. Um, and um, this is mica powder that I'm going to be mixing a little bit into my resin. You can see the squiggly lines in here. I did that on purpose because I'm hoping that will show through. You can't see the jellyfish in the background, but you will be able to see it when I'm done. <clears throat> just the um, ever so much, just the perfect amount as far as, you know, as far as I wanted. These are the hooks on the back holding up my painting. This wood is very hard. I had no trouble at all getting these hooks in there. Uh, cup, ups, cup hooks. Okay, so it's holding it up nice. I, it's nice and level. And um, so I'm going to push my painting out of, a way, out of the way in a minute. I make sure it's nice and sanded. I make sure it's nice and wiped off. I'm trying to mitigate any amount of lint or dust. Uh, the struggle is real. <laughs> you really have to try to do the best you can to, uh, to, to keep that off your painting. So I'm going to take some of that mica resin tint because I don't want it to, I don't want to change the color. I want it to be clear, but I want it this mica has some iridescent quality and and just enough will give it some bling, I guess you could say. But it will give it an iridescent quality that I want on the painting. So uh, here I think I may have enough, um, but then as I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, okay, this, this is probably just enough. And then I'm thinking, I'm having second thoughts, and I eventually decide I need a little more because I have to be careful. I don't want to change the color. I don't want to overshadow or change the color of the paint, but I want to make it stand out a little bit and have a little bit of shimmer to it. So I put some of that in there, some more, and it turns out to be the right amount. So I stir, stir, and <laughs> you're always stirring. Wipe your stick, stir, stir some more carefully. I'm going a little fast here, but I'm also, again, aware that although I have plenty of time left, I, I don't want to run into a problem where it starts to harden too fast and I'm still picking lint or or dust out of it. So I'm moving my painting back and I'm ready to pour the resin over it. Okay, so that's the back, those are the hooks. Uh, I don't know why I did that. I have done that a couple times already, but <laughs> it's late and I don't remember anymore. Um, <clears throat> and you couldn't hear me, which is why I'm doing the voiceover because you couldn't hear me through my respirator. So I had to record this whole thing at night, and I, I, I must sound exhausted, so forgive me. Uh, doing, the, doing the best I can to explain everything as, as best as I can. So I am, um, ah, my torch. There it is. A must-have or a heat gun. I find the torch works, the kitchen torch. It's just enough for this size, and it works very, very well. Don't burn it. Don't keep your flame so high that you're going to burn your resin, okay? Keep it uh, on the lower, medium to lower end. If you find it's not popping, bump it up a little bit. But do it a little bit at a time so you don't burn the resin. So here I've poured it out. I'm going to spread it with my hands. I'm wearing two sets of gloves. When I'm done spreading it around... Um, one set will come off and the other set will be nice and dry and resin-free um, so that I can grab my torch and, and not get resin all over it and ruin my torch. So I'm moving the resin around with my hands, and uh, I, I just want to make a quick statement here about um, resin and health. And there are people, and I've read threads, and, and I feel so bad for people who have trouble with resin, and it's real. It's a real thing, and it doesn't matter what they do. They've, you know, used precautions. They've 
use respirators, they've used everything, and they have trouble, and um, it's not worth it. It's not worth it if you're having any amount of trouble with this, if you're, if you're having any adverse effects from this, don't do it. It's not worth it, okay? Your health is so much more important. You want to be around to have fun with art. And um, I'm having fun with this. I'm lucky right now. I haven't had any adverse effects. It, I can do this, um, but not everybody can. So I want to just say that <clears throat> not everybody can do this, and please be aware of what's happening to your body while you're doing this. Okay, so I'm taking my gloves off, and I'm about to grab my torch and start attacking those bubbles. <laughs> um, <clears throat> bubbles, dust, lint. Um, threads that may come off your clothes that may be on the table, that may be on a, a curtain or a blind. I don't have curtains in my in my studio, but I do have some, some blinds, some wood blinds. And, I mean, any number of thing, things can get in here, let's face it. So I'm taking my torch and I'm, I'm going through my bubbles. And I just want to say, you know, I've read, <laughs> I've heard so many times people say, Oh, and, you know, it will burn off any dust and lint and whatnot. And I don't know what I'm doing, but it doesn't do it for me. The, that lint, that dust just sits there stubborn as can be. And I end up having to go back with my tweezers and my skewer, shish kebab stick and pushing it in and pulling it out and... You know, while it's still very wet, of course, because you're work, always working against the clock with resin. And so always be prepared and have your tweezers nearby. In my last video, I had forgotten them, but I did have a skewer. Tweezers are great. Very fine, you know, point, pointed tweezers will get out little bits of dust and pieces of lint and various things. Now you see me eyeballing it. I have a very good view of the painting, the way the sun is coming in. And I can see, I can see practically everything. I have my glasses on, I have my respirator on, I can get close, I can look. Uh, I get leveled down to the painting. I'm, I'm, I'm watching it like a hawk. You know, really, I'm just I'm looking at this thing, and I'm and I babysit this thing for the next you know 25 to 30 minutes. There is a point of no return, so get as much as you can. <laughs> I know that I know that I can say that that goes without saying, but just babysit this thing, and because there is a point of no return where you might see something and you have to decide, is it so important that I could risk making a mark on my painting, making a hole or a dent, or having a little piece of dust in there? I mean, come on, this is art. Let's face it, okay? It's art. It's not perfect. It's fun. It's great stuff. Okay, so I've gone through that for the most part. I think I still continue to do a little bit more torching because I'm still babysitting it. I moved it into the sun because if you look closely, um, and you'll see it when I paint, when I, when I post the painting t tomorrow morning, when I run downstairs happily, I can't wait to see it, is you can, you can actually see the lines next to the other jellyfish, the jellyfish in the background. Just uh, just uh, the, the hint of it, not uh, in your face, uh, kind of like the other one, but um, just a little, little bit of depth there, show some depth, some movement. And um, I'm torching it again, seeing some more bubbles. Again, they continue to rise, and you just have to, you just have to babysit it. Okay, there's the picnic uh, netting. And that's something that I found that other artists do. And I found it on Amazon where, where they suggested there was a link in there, a link in there. And I went to it and I got it. And I'm so glad I did. You, these things are to cover food when you're outside having a picnic. It protects it from, you know, of course, flies and bugs and everything like that. This thing works amazing for this. 
just amazing. This thing works. I wish it came. I wish they came bigger. I mean, I really do. I, I've, I've tried. I have bigger pieces, and let me tell you, it's really a challenge to get uh, to keep dust and and lint particles off these pieces. Um, but when they're this size, it's far more manageable. And this uh, picnic food cover netting device is perfect. It's absolutely perfect for this and it works unquestionably. It works. So do yourself a favor, make one, find one, find something like it. Uh, it's a very fine netting and um, it really will save you a headache rather than trying to uh, make something out of plastic, which I've done that too. But this thing is uh, was a game changer as far as this size goes. So here I am. I'm still kind of babysitting it, but I'm ready to throw the towel, and I think I've gotten it all. I do come back a few more times and and look in on it, and uh, but all in all, I, I've done a good job getting what I need to, what I could possibly get off it. And, uh, you know, I'm relentless. I uh, <laughs> Look at me. I'm picking it up again. Actually, actually, I'm moving it over so that I have some more room on my table. And um, then when I eventually put this thing on, I go back a couple times. And I just make sure, very carefully, very carefully lifting it up just to make sure that I didn't miss anything large. Now, here I am scraping because the resin is running off the sides. I have a piece of plastic there so that I can recapture the resin and I reuse it. Um, and, um, and that's a whole nother story video. But, you know, I'm going around and um, see, here I am. <laughs> I keep trying to keep, keep finding little things. And, uh, and there I go again. Okay, we're almost done here, I promise you. Um, but you take your stick around or anything that you have handy and you go down around the bottom, this the bottom part of your painting and get as much resin off that has dripped off uh, because it will leave drippings and then you'll have to go back and sand it. All right, are we done, Mary? There we go, it's on. Okay, I want to thank you again, everybody. Um, I really appreciate you watching this, and stay tuned for how it looks. Bye-bye.